his own idea about ethics of care in the African context, please. Go ahead. Okay, I would like to say that uh, it's uh, a privilege and uh, a pleasure for me to express my opinion as regards uh, the African ethics of care within the APGC platform. I will be focusing on the ontological and cosmological foundations of uh, the African ethics of care. Um, I observe the situation within the environment where I stay, here in Oshun State, the western part of Nigeria, uh, in a village called Ilare, a place where you have mostly farmers. And uh, they have their sons and daughters in Lagos and Abuja and other big cities. And when the COVID-19 began and uh, there was a lockdown, their sons and daughters in big cities sent money. And uh, they bought food and money was distributed to the people. And I was asking myself, why were they distributing the money? Why were they giving food to their brothers and sisters in the village? It's simply because they understand the connection between them and they. Mm -hmm. They understand the importance of their brothers to them. They know that without their brothers, they will not be. Mm -hmm. And they know that each time they return home, those who make them relevant are their brothers. I belong to a school of thought that strongly believes that an analysis of an African condition or situation or perspective should begin from the African language. Just as we have in with Justin, he says that language is the structure of reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is why most African thinkers, like in Biti, when he was analyzing African religion and culture, he began first with the analysis of the Kikuyu language. And we have persons like Yurebu Pantaleon. He begins with an analysis of ontology, which is from an Igbo word, an Igbo word. And uh, Asozo, in talking about African philosophy, he began with an Igbo word which is Ibu Anidanda. And then Okonko talks of Uwando in his analysis. And when we go back to uh, Kagame coming after temples, he speaks of Untu. And uh, coming into this discussion, I would actually like to pick a language, an Igbo word, that captures the African ethics of care. And for me, that Igbo word is Igwebuike. In other languages within the African context, it might be called Ubuntu, it might be called Ujama, but within the environment where I came up from, it is called Igwebuike, which means that there is strength in number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it captures a philosophy of the Igbo person who strongly believes that the human life is very, very fundamental. And so there is need for some kind of complementary. There is need for some kind of a solidarity to be able to withstand the difficulties of life. And so the word Igwebuike, which I will be using, is like a key, the much I understand, to the understanding of African philosophy, religion, and culture. Now, when we talk about African ethics of care, what implications has Igwebuike philosophy for the African ethics of care? For me, it is the underlining principle of the African ethics of care. And it is central in the sense that it places the human person at the center of reality. When we speak of the cosmological foundation, in African cosmos or African cosmology, you have God at the top, the human person at the center, and then the spirits down there. But the human person is at the center, which means that each time the African speaks of care, it must be central to the human person. In fact, it is the human person that even makes the gods relevant. It is the human person that worships the gods, and in worshiping them, they are relevant. It is the human person that honors the ancestors. And it is only in honoring the ancestors that the ancestors become relevant. And that is why the ancestors and even God keeps man in existence for their own relevance within the African ontology. And the centrality of the human person in the African cosmos also speaks of the centrality of life. That is the basis of the African ethics of care. That life is fundamental and central. And even the names that the Igbo person gives the child tells you of the importance and the centrality of life. 
In speaking of, in giving the child the name, the Igbo person we call the child Ndoka, which means that life is more important. He calls him Ndokaako, which means that life is even more important than wealth. Mm -hmm. He speaks of him as Ndubisi, which means that life is the first, the sumum bonum of reality. He speaks of Ndulwe, he gives the child the name Ndulwe, which is let life continue. But what is existence without life? Nduamaka, mm. which means that life is beautiful. And Chiwendo, which means that God owns life. Mm. And if God owns life, it has very serious implications. Because you were disconnected. Okay, um, my apologies for the disconnection. I was uh, emphasizing uh, the central place of uh, the human person, uh, giving or creating an ontological foundation for the African ethics of care. And uh, connected to the human person is the issue of life. And I gave examples of uh, the names that the African gives to his child, the Igbo African specifically, that points to the value that the African places on life. This value that the African places on life is the basis for the African ethics of care. Uh, it is not about economy. It is not about trade. It is not about politics. It is about life, which is priceless. Life, which is irreplaceable. And because of the importance of life, when the African sees death, or even when he names his child, sometimes he names his child, Omudindo, which means that death is bad. And sometimes he names the child, Omubiko, which means death, please, a posture of begging death, that life may continue. This importance is why the African uh, sees uh, the importance of life, is why the African does everything possible to preserve life through the ethics of care. And I was very happy when uh, Dr. Anozie made reference to Mado. It is a very important concept in our understanding of the human person, uh, the beauty of life. It means there is beauty, there is goodness. And his concept of the person as mother is only a particular expression of the universality in man. Because mother, he is mother, not because of his own self, not because of what he can do, but because of his ontological link with God, who is Mma itself who is beauty itself. Mm -hmm. So this connection that the human person has with God, God is very central in African ontology. Each mm -hmm. time we talk, we talk about God. And so it is not out of place that I'm talking about God at the moment, because you can't talk about the human person without God, who is his source of origin. And even when the human person names his own child from the Igbo background, he calls him Chiwendo, which means that God owns life. He calls him Chijindo, God holds life. Chidiogo, chinere. God gives. And what does it mean? It then means that if there is an ontological link between the human person, the human life, and God, it then means that that life must be respected, given every care that is necessary. Because God is very important and very well honored, respected within the African context. The human life has to be respected because it is the work of God himself. Okay. Now, coming back to the ethics of uh, care, going deeper into the ethics of care, we can't talk about ethics without relationship in African ontology. In African ontology, we talk about ethics because there is a relationship. And a person is said to be ethical because he relates well. And there is an emphasis on character in terms of relationship. You see, when you go back to the Igbo language and the Yoruba language, the word for ethics is the same thing with the word for character. Awa in Igbo means character, but it didn't mean ethics. In the Yoruba, when you talk about the Iwa, it still means morality, and at the same time, it still means, uh, it still means ethics. So there is a very strong connection between character and ethics. And so when a person is said to be ethical, what it means is that the person has character. Mm -hmm. A person who does not have character is not an ethical person. 
But from the Western perspective, somebody can be in the medical field and does some things following certain principles. The person is said to be ethical. But in the African context, you are not just ethical because you have followed rules and principles, but because you go down to the point where you relate with the other person in a very good way. And that is why they now say you are ethical. You have character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the issue of uh, 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 ethics of care uh, takes us back to brotherhood. That is what Igbo Wike stands for. Ethics of care works within the context of brotherhood. No one talks about an ethics of care where there is no brotherhood. And that's why if you look at the different proverbs of the African people, it points to that brotherhood as the heart of the African life, philosophy, religion, and culture. The African tells you that a stick in a bundle cannot be broken. But a stick can be broken. But in a bundle, it cannot be broken. He says that when spiders unite, that they can tie up a lion. Emphasizing the importance of unity, collaboration, the importance of staying together solidarity. That when a bird builds its own house, it uses the feathers of other birds. The importance of collaboration for the purpose of survival. That two ants will not fail to carry a grasshopper, but an ant will fail to do that. And in a period like ours, during this time of COVID-19, survival is dependent on solidarity. Mm -hmm. Once there is no solidarity, then survival is diminished. And this solidarity we are talking about is based on the probability of life. The African understands life as being a probability. And that is why the African will tell you, if it remains one, then nothing remains. The African will tell you that while going to the toilet, you wouldn't understand the context of the toilet I'm talking about. To go to the convenience, he says, carry three sticks. Because if you carry one, there could be a second coming and there will be a problem. And so he says, carry three sticks, you know, so that you are able to clean up yourself at the end of the day. So the basis of this ethics of care, ontologically, is based on the nature of the human person. We are individuals with different gifts to survive. I need you, and you need me. You need my gift, I need your gift. It is very important because we are all limited as human beings. And so where I am limited, your strength complements me. Where I fail, you stand and we keep moving as a group. That is the basis of this ego wiki, of this solidarity, of this complementarity, philosophy of complementarity. And it is only within the context of collaboration, of complementarity, that life becomes from the African ontology. Because we become by taking something of the other person. No one becomes on his own. And so in a moment like this, when we are struggling with uh, COVID-19, uh, there is the need for an emphasis on brotherhood. I made reference to what happened in a village where I work in Ilare, in Oshun State, how the people are able to survive during the time of uh, lockdown is that their sons and daughters sent them food. Mm -hmm. They were sending them food, not really because they were going to die of hunger, but it was a time to show solidarity. And the solidarity we are talking about is spiritual in the sense that the feeling that my brother stands with me keeps me going in the midst of difficulty. They gave me the food as well, not because I cannot afford food, but that feeling that there is somebody who cares for me keeps me going during the period mm -hmm. of lockdown. And then when the World Health Organization was making, uh, they, were, they were making uh, 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 guidelines and uh, for, for uh, this COVID-19 period, they did not take into cognizance the peculiarities of people. Social distancing and all that. That is not an African mentality. And so it is very difficult to see people actually obeying social distancing in an environment where I live. For the very reason that social distancing does not make sense to a person who lives face me, I face you building. When my building is already facing your own, and we can even shake one another from my own window, I greet you in your own next window, and they're talking about social distancing, it is very difficult, actually. So there is need to put into cognizance the peculiarities of people, so that the laws made universally can be applicable particularly. So when we are talking about during this period of COVID-19, African ethics of care is based on their concept of the human person, their concept of life. 
And this has to be put into consideration in anything the African is doing to survive during this period of COVID-19. Thank you very much.